Today I want to go over how to send out an email campaign using Active Campaign. So Active Campaign is like MailChimp, like Infusionsoft. Basically, it is an email marketing and kind of a CRM for your website backend. And I've loved Active Campaign. I think for what you get for the price, uh, it is extremely valuable. So you get a lot for not a ton of money, whereas something like Infusionsoft can be super, super expensive and you don't always use all of it. So Active Campaign is just a program that I have found that works really well for what I needed to do. So let's go ahead, jump in, and I will show you how to create your first email campaign. Hey, I'm down here at the bottom. Sorry I had to jump on you there. So when you get into one of your active campaign dashboards, it's going to look very similar to this. So what you're going to want to do is you're going to want to create a new campaign. Now there is a drop down here. You can create a new contact or a new list. But for the purpose of this video, we are creating a new email campaign from one of my active campaign accounts. And we can title this. So this is your campaign name. Enter a name to help you remember what this campaign is all about. Only you will see this. So let's say you were trying to promote some ticket sales. Maybe you are trying to sell tickets to an event and you want to let your list know and you want them to buy the tickets. So after you name the campaign, again, you can call it anything you want you're going to select your campaign type. So you can either send a regular one-time email campaign, you can actually create custom sequences, you can send it based on your date, you can send an automated campaign, all kinds of stuff, you can split test it. But for the sake of this video, let's just send a simple standard one-time email campaign to let people know, hey, we've got an event coming up, check it out. So I'm going to click select standard campaign. And when you do, you're going to do Scroll up there and hit next. Now it's going to give you an option to select your list. So you will have all the lists you have for your company and if you segment them out, then that's great too. They will all be right here. So I'm going to select this free book list opt-in that we tried out a few weeks ago and I'm going to select next and then it is going to bring up some email templates. So you can either build one from scratch and it's got a drag and drop editor that's really easy to use, or you can do what I do and kind of start ahead of the game and save some time by creating a, an email from one of these templates that have already been put together. And I haven't read on this, but you've got to think that Active Campaign has probably tested all these emails and so they work well and they're set up well for um, conversions. You can also look at your past campaigns. So here are some emails that I have sent before on this list. So if you have a template already down, you can use one of those. But in this case, let's kind of start from just kind of brand new. So I'm going to look to see if they have an event. There it is, an event basic. Use this design. Here's where you pick your sender details. So I'm just going to select my first name. I'm going to select Brandon at events.com and then you can also create your subject and you can always change it later as you can see there. So I am going to come up with the subject line one night only event this Saturday. Details inside. Remember create intrigue, give them a reason to open it. Okay let me move my little screen over to the left here. Now when you click that next button, you are now in your email builder. So this is the email template that we saw in the previous screen. So now all we're going to do is build it and it's really easy. Watch this. So essentially this email is built by stacking different blocks on top of each other. So in this case, here is a block. Here is a block which is just the logo straight across. This image is going to be a block or maybe a row to picture it a little bit better in your head. This is going to be a block, this, so on and so forth. And you can drag and drop to your heart's content. So let's say if I wanted to take this picture of fake Tom Brady and move it over to the right, you're going to hover over it so that you see the border outline. And you're going to hover over this little plus sign and you're just going to move it. You can insert it there and it will move everything. Or you can even take this picture and you can move it 
above right there. So see, you can insert it pretty much anywhere you want to. And then Active Campaign does a good job of shrinking and working with the dimensions to make it fit. So what I'm going to do since I'm just kind of advertising for one event is I'm going to take out probably a lot of this. So to take out a block or a row, you're going to want to hover over the little system preferences icon and you just click delete this. You can see that there are a lot of other options when you hover over that, but I'm just going to delete. It's going to ask, are you sure? Yes. Same with this, delete. Same with this picture, delete. Okay, so once you've got most everything deleted and stripped away that you don't want in there, now you can start customizing it. So I usually just like to work from the top down. So I will click here and I want to change this logo. This is just the default logo, so I want to change it to my company logo. So also notice here you can make this bigger by scrolling. You can make it as big and as blurry as you want to, or you can make it smaller and it's going to look a little bit sharper. So let's start with this logo. So I'm going to select the logo and then when you do and you actually click your mouse, you're going to see a few options up here. So you can center it, you can right align it, let's keep it left aligned, you can edit it, you can crop it, of course, or you can replace it with a new image. So I'm going to select new image and I'm going to see if here is a logo. I'm going to choose that and that logo is going to now show up there. I'm going to make it a little bit smaller to look a little bit more high def and I'm going to center align it like that. Also, I'm going to take out this block up here. I just don't want it in there. Are you sure? Yes. So again, I'm wanting to sell tickets. So I want to, in this email, show what people are going to be getting. So let's say if this was a concert, I might want to replace this image of people rafting. It would be super confusing if I was advertising a concert, right? I'm going to replace this with some sort of maybe an image from a previous concert or event, which of course I don't have loaded up here. So I'm going to add a new image. And then you can pick from your desktop or wherever your pictures are stored. So I'm going to go in here, select some images. Maybe this one's good. Here's an event. And I'm going to load that into the email drag and drop folder. Now, if it's too big, and this one might be too big, it's going to ask if you can shrink it down so that you don't blow up people's inboxes. Let's see what it says about this one. I'm going to choose it. Maybe it's not too big. Sweet, looks like it's perfect, all right? So there's some people having fun. Of course, you can shrink that down to whatever you want. You can make it edge to edge. Now, let's say if I wanted to play around with this section and this section only. So when you highlight it, look over this right-hand column and you'll see some more options. So you can insert a block. So let's say if under this picture I wanted to insert a button, you can just drag that over here, insert it there, and then there's your button and you can also insert social links. So if you wanted to drag social links right below that picture, you can add in your social links too, and then they will show up in cool little buttons like that, and it looks really nice and fancy. That is a lot of social media buttons, so I'm gonna go ahead and get rid of that. Are you sure? Yes. So let's go into this picture and see if there's anything we want to do. So you have two options over here, insert and then options. I'm gonna click options, select this image, now you can do a few things here. You can link, you can put a link in this image so if someone clicks on it, maybe it can go to your website. You can also play with the width a little bit so you can see this is shrinking. Essentially that's what this dragger does over here but it's a lot quicker to do that so I'd probably just stick with that. You can change the background of the image. Let's see if it'll change here. Yep, you see how that row is changing. So maybe if you have certain brand colors, like if you've got like a mint green brand color or something like that, you could put that there but I'm just gonna leave it blank for now and just keep it wide and simple. You can also change the individual padding. So let's say you wanted to add 250 pixels of left padding. That's going to take that picture and put 250 pixels of padding, so on and so forth. So really you can move it around however you want to. You can change all of that stuff. It's really cool and really helpful. So I'm going to, again, bring this back to maximum size. And then I'm going to actually change this. So let's drag this content paragraph to the top. Let's delete this button. That button looks a little kind of old and kind of dated to me, so I'm going to delete that. Are you sure? Yes. And leave that button. And I'm just going to change the text. So you would do it just like any other text editor. You hover over it, you select it and say, hey, come out to our event 
it's going to be a blast. Then give them a call to action, right? Click the button below to buy your tickets. And then that's a little bit small, right? If someone's looking at that on their phone or a small screen, it's not going to show up. So I'm going to increase this from 12 to, let's say, what looks good? Maybe 20. That might be a little much. Maybe I want to bold it. No, nah, not bold it. Don't want to center align it. No. Don't want to change the font. Maybe Comic Sans. I'm just kidding. I'm not going to do that to you. Let's keep it at Arial. Let's keep it nice and simple. Now, something else cool you can do. So let's say if you have a list and you collect, in addition to emails, you collect names. And let's say a guy named John signed up for your list. So instead of just saying, hey, we can make it a little bit more personal. So I'll put a space there and I will choose the personalize option. And here's actually where you can go in and choose all these different options to customize this email. So you can select first name and where it says percentage, first name percentage, that will not be there, right? If John gets this email, it will say, hey John, come to our event, it's going to be a blast. So that's just a really easy way to make a personalized invite. Then what I want to do is obviously I want to change this button and link it to the ticket page. So what you're gonna do is you're going to select the row that this button is in, and again, you do that just by clicking this horizontal area that it's on and you're gonna to want to add a link. So maybe it's http colon slash slash ticketmaster.com slash new event, whatever it is. You can change the font in the button, but let's keep it as it is. You can change the font size. Let's make it a little bit bigger so that it jumps out at people. The padding looks good. Let's change the button background so that it sticks out to people. Let's make it green, right? Green, give them the go ahead. And then, Right now, I like my buttons to be a little bit more round. So I'm gonna change the border radius to 100%, makes it round. I'm going to take off the actual border so it's kind of just more of a flat style. And let's see if there's anything else I want to do. Actually, maybe I wanna change that font to white. White, that's a little harsh, maybe a darker gray. That looks a little, little bit better. And actually, I want to make the padding a little bit bigger, the font a little bit bigger, and maybe that's good. So there you have it. There is an email, and we've put our logo up there. We've played with the dimensions of the picture. We've put a cool picture in. We have told a little bit about our event. We have created a call to action, and then we have linked our sales page to this button and now we just need to send it out okay so what do we do from here again we've created the email we're ready to send it out we've already picked and you can see this five uh, section progression up here that shows where we are to actually sending this we've picked our list we picked what kind of email we want we've designed it now we're going to select next and next we're going to get a little summary so you kind of want to double check before you send out to 10,000 people and embarrass yourself by misspelling something or putting a wrong date. So this is what the email is gonna look like when we get it. It's gonna have a subject, and that's our subject that we chose in the first screen. This is the from, who it's going to appear from when it comes to people's inboxes. You can change the reply to, so let's say it's from you, but you want it to maybe reply to your customer service department. You can change it and it will go there. Again, this is the list. You do, according to regulations, have to put your business address right there, so you're gonna leave that. And you can actually select really cool options here. So of course, you probably wanna keep your open and red tracking on. You want to keep your link tracking on so you can see how many people opened it versus how many people actually clicked that link so you'll know what to do better next time. You can sync it up to Google Analytics and all that kind of stuff. You can also schedule the email. So let's say I didn't want to schedule it right now. Maybe I wanted to schedule it for tomorrow when everyone is just getting up. So maybe people are getting up at about 7.30 or so. So I would schedule it for 7.30 a.m. Now you can send a test email. I always recommend sending a test email opening on a desktop and a phone just to make sure there's no wacky sort of formatting issues. You can of course preview it on an email client or a desktop and then this will also check your spam. So in this email, they actually found a potential spam problem. Your reply to address is using a free mail service, but your from does not. So 
I would probably want to go and change that to my regular email address, which I did not know about and I would change naturally. But for the sake of this video, I'm not going to put in my regular email address, all right? So once you have reviewed that summary, what we're going to do is we're going to finish this. So all you're going to do is select finish and our campaign has been scheduled. If it, if we were selecting it to send out immediately, then that button would have read send. You'd have clicked it and it would have sent out. So again, make sure you double check all of that to make sure you're not making any silly mistakes. But it's really simple. So you select the type of email you want to send, you select your list, you build the email, you double check the summaries, make sure everything looks good, and then you send it. It's super simple. Active Campaign builds in a lot of really cool resources and tools to send really professional emails that look good and you can get them out really quickly. I'm Brandon Stiles, a digital marketer in Atlanta. Hope that was cool. Please subscribe to the channel if that helped and I'll see you next time.